The rise of streaming services and streaming devices in the past few years has been absolutely insane. According to data from Statista.com, the revenue in the smart streaming devices market is estimated to hit a $10.2 billion in 2025 and is projected to grow at an annual rate of 8.59% from 2025 to 2029. And that just scratches the surface of how explosive this market has been. But despite all that, the quality of most streaming devices remain questionable at best. The only real exception is maybe the Apple TV 4K, but that's super locked and not exactly everyone's favorite. I mean, you can't even install your own browser on it. The rest, from Fire TV to Roku and others, use seriously underwhelming hardware. There are some better options like the Nvidia Shield, but they aren't exactly portable and are relatively more expensive. Just to give you an example of the sluggish performance of these devices, here is one of the best selling streaming devices out there. And yet, as you can see, it still takes forever to load an app. Even the bigger services aren't much better. No surprises there, since they mostly use bottom tier hardware, packing like 2GB of RAM in some cases, which is very sad for such high end devices. However, in their defense, they probably allocate a lot of resources to our software, which ends up crippling the hardware to some extent. More on that later. But here's the thing, there's a way around this if you're willing to get your hands a little dirty. The rise of high power single board computers or SBCs has made DIY solutions way more accessible for many use cases, and that includes building your own streaming device, sometimes referred to as an HTPC or a home theater PC. With a custom setup, you can get a much better user experience as long as you're okay with sacrificing a few software conveniences. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. For this build, I'm using this X1 SBC from a brand called WayPondF. I don't know much about the brand itself, but at that time, it was one of the best options available on Amazon. I got the 4GB RAM and 64GB storage version for around $110, which is actually much cheaper than the high-end streaming devices like the Apple TV or Shield. This SBC has an x86 architecture with an Intel Celeron N5105 11 Gen Jasper Lake processor up to 2.9GHz, which is way more horsepower than what's needed for this use case. This board comes with onboard graphics, which is very convenient. I'm also adding a Wi-Fi card, though that's optional since this board has Ethernet port built in. The first step in this build is installing the Wi-Fi card and taping the antennas to the board. Then we hook it up to a monitor and peripherals to get it ready for installation. Now for the OS, I'm going with Libre Elec. For those who don't know, Libre Elec is a lightweight Linux based OS specifically designed for running Kodi. It's minimalistic and turns any device into dedicated Kodi media center without the bloat of a full desktop Linux installation. Perfect for what we're doing here. There are other options like Open Elec and Jellyfin, which might work better for some of you. Installation is pretty straightforward Forward, just head to the LibreLack website and use their USB creation tool. ETA Prime has some great videos on this and I'll link one below. Once the USB drive is ready, we boot from it and go through the OS installation following the on-screen instructions. I installed it on the onboard storage, but you can use an NVMe drive as well since this board has one open slot. Once the setup is done, we are greeted with the LibreLack home screen. The first thing I do is configure the Wi-Fi. For everyday use, I'm using this multimedia remote I picked up from Amazon. It supports both Bluetooth and USB dongle connections and has a full-sized keyboard, which makes searching way easier than those annoying on-screen keyboards. Just plug the dongle into the USB port and it works instantly, no drivers needed. If you're not a fan of remotes, a wireless keyboard with a trackpad is another solid option that a lot of people prefer. Librelec and Kodi have their own app stores where you can download popular apps like YouTube and Twitch. Some others like Netflix require a custom installation which you can find guides for online. This is one of the downsides of going the DIY route. The software won't be as polished as commercial streaming devices and you will have to tinker around a bit. I can already see some of you debating this in the comments but please hear me out, I'm just showing you an option. Personally, I actually like it. Speed matters to me more than user friendliness but then again, I do have a background in computer science so your mileage may vary. Now, let's talk graphics power. For basic streaming, the built-in GPU is fine, but if you want hardware transcoding or something similar, you might need an external GPU. I did try setting this up with one, but I didn't get very far. No matter whatever I did, I just could not get the drivers to play nice with Librelec. I didn't have the time to troubleshoot it further, so that's something I'll have to revisit in future. If any of you manage to get it working, drop a comment and let me know. As you can see, size-wise, this setup isn't much bigger than the stick-style devices and is definitely smaller than the bigger premium options like the Apple TVs. And the best part? It's way faster. Oh, and one last thing. I recently found a really cool 3D printable case for this SBC, so I printed it out. It does a great job optimizing the space inside and I'll link it below if you want to check it out. There are also pre-made enclosures available for X1 and most other SBCs, so pick whatever works best for you. So if you've been looking for a faster streaming device without being locked into weak OEM hardware, this DIY solution might be worth a shot. 
Sure, you'll probably get frustrated at times trying to get certain software features working, but the performance boost will make it all worthwhile. Well, at least it did for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and leave a comment telling how you feel about custom HTPCs in general. Once again, thanks for your time and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.